we select our sample from a population. We want our sample to be representative of the population, so that after we conduct our well-designed research, what we learn from the sample can tell us something valuable by generalizing back to the population. A representative sample has similar physical or psychological characteristics as the population. The best way to get a representative sample is to use a random sample. However, a random sample does not guarantee a representative sample. A sample is random when every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. The random sample is randomly selected from a larger population of subjects. Later, we may use random assignment, for example, when we split our randomly selected sample into two randomly assigned groups. But because of the way that randomness works, sometimes, despite our best efforts, our randomly selected sample differs from our population in some important way. Random selection is the best way to get a representative sample, but it does not guarantee a representative sample. Truly random sampling is difficult to do, especially when we are studying human beings. Sometimes we don't have the time, or money, or availability to do truly random sampling. Even if we were studying college students at our university, a truly random sample would have to include all college students across the country. So many times we are left studying the people whom we have available. They become our participants because they are convenient. And we call this a convenience sample. The convenience sample uses participants who are readily available. And this is not necessarily a bad practice, but we should be honest with ourselves about what we are doing. Before we begin generalizing, applying the results from our convenience sample to the population, we should replicate the same study at other universities with other college students to see if others find the same results. Most research in the behavioral sciences is done using convenience samples. And because of this, one joke goes that psychology is the scientific study of college sophomores. Overstated, yes, but something to keep in mind when we are using convenience samples. Convenience samples are more likely to lead to sampling error. And sampling error occurs when samples are not random or representative. Sampling error happens when we ask too many of the same people or we ask the wrong people. The time is World War II in England. In a dimly lit Quonset hut, the Royal Air Force crews gather, having just returned from a bombing run over Germany. The debriefing begins with a moment of silence for the flight crews who did not return. Then the lieutenant, or lieutenant, asks the returning flight crews, from which direction did the fatal attacks come? The pilots respond to the man, we were attacked from above and behind. It's unanimous. The lieutenant scribbles this on a piece of paper, hands it to a corporal, and instructs, take this information to our departing flight crews. This may save lives. But as the corporal is leaving the dimly lit Quonset hut, a hand reaches from the inky shadows and says, stop. No, that information may cost lives. So what is wrong with that information? Stop the video now if you want to ponder or discuss. This is an example of sampling error. The lieutenant or lieutenant is asking the wrong people. What does he really want to know? From which direction did the fatal attacks come? But who is he asking? All we know is that those who survived and returned were attacked from above and behind. Those who died may have been attacked from a different direction, which is why those attacks were fatal. Here is another famous illustration of sampling error. 
In 1936, the magazine Literary Digest, which had a long track record of picking presidential winners, mailed 10 million postcards asking people their choice for president. Of the 2 million responses, 57% preferred the Republican Alf Landon. However, Landon lost by a wide margin to Democrat Franklin D. Roosevelt. So what went wrong? Again, stop the video if you'd like to ponder or discuss. The answer this time is sampling error by asking too many of the same people. The magazine selected names and addresses from phone books and automobile registration lists. But what year was this? 1936. And what was happening in America in 1936? The Great Depression. Who could afford cars and personal telephones? People with money or jobs. Literary Digest was asking too many of the same people. Most poor and formerly middle class people, those without cars or phones, voted for the Democratic Party and FDR. And by the way, the picture of FDR was done by my 15-year-old niece, Abby. So let's summarize what we have learned about populations and samples. Results from the sample should generalize to the population. That is, what is true about the sample should apply in general to the population. A sample generalizes better when the sample is more representative of the population. So let's use an example of cooking stew. You want to know if the stew is ready to serve. Are the carrots fully cooked? Does it need more salt? Might it contain an ill-cooked bit of beef or underdone potato? In this example, what is your population? It's the entire pot of stew. So how large of a sample do you need to determine if the stew is ready? Do you need to eat an entire bowl? No. You can tell everything you need to know from a single spoonful. As long as what is true of that spoonful? As long as the spoonful is representative. The spoonful must contain a carrot, a pea, some beef, the potato, etc. As long as the elements of the stew are represented in the spoonful, what we learn from the spoonful can tell us about the entire kettle. We only need a little taste to know if the stew needs more salt. Of course, if your spoonful lacks carrots, then you cannot answer the question of whether carrots are fully cooked from your non-representative spoonful. What is the best way to get the representative sample? The best way to get a representative sample is from a random sample. That means you stir the pot first, so that all of the elements in the stew have an equal probability of being selected. However, because a random sample can still be non-representative, we need inferential statistics to determine how well our sample represents our population.